Bosnia is a country of dilemmas. Its past, marked by a conflict between 92 and 95, consequence of Yugoslavia's dissolution after the end of the Cold War. This conflict was fought along ethnic lines, dividing the country into Muslim Bosniaks, Bosnian Serbs, and Bosnian Croats. One of the conflict's main features was the reliance on ethnic cleansing and genocide against Muslim Bosniaks, the use of concentration camps and landmines as war methods. Violence ended with the 95 Dayton Accords, a process brokered by the international community that rebuilt the Bosnian state into two entities, Republika Srpska for Bosnian Serbs and a Bosnia-Croat Federation. One of the war's effects has been the rooted divisions along ethnic lines and the use of this divide for nationalist politics, maintaining communities separate. As war ended, organizations like the UN and the EU put in place massive efforts to rebuild Bosnia. Physical and economic reconstruction, rebuilding politics by creating a democratic state, and a novel process for dealing with the past to which they call transitional justice. Its aim, bringing about justice and reconciliation between ethnic groups. Here is where the dilemmas begin. Who should be reconciled? How do you deal with such violent pasts in order to plan a common future? International actors focus strongly on prosecuting war criminals and creating a new justice system. Local actors focused on healing victims from their traumas and seeking truth about what happened during the war in order to make it public. Others created memorials to remind of what happened and pay tribute to thousands of war victims. Not all practices were harmonious. Some dealt legally with perpetrators of massive crimes, whilst others supported victims into rebuilding their lives, empowering them through truth-telling. But these efforts collide with the ethnic and nationalist perspectives dominating Bosnian politics. For some, justice was biased against particular ethnic groups. For others, it was distant from victims who are more interested in knowing the whereabouts of their missing relatives rather than the fate of some war criminal. Memorials are a double-edged sword. For some are tribute to victims, but for others are homage to war criminals. The setup, context, and actors are immersed in a messy and confusing set of relations where priorities collide, generating tensions. Politics are fought along ethnic lines. Unemployment and feeble prospects for the economy have made newer generations pessimistic about progress. Reconciliation and development seem distant for the average Bosnian. What to do with so many actors and dynamics involved in peace? Each with its own conceptions about justice, truth, reconciliation. The way they understand these ideas affects how projects are implemented in Bosnia. Mapping these projects and identifying the underlying concepts they are based upon can tell a lot about what is happening with efforts to build peace. Where various policies converge, it is possible to find common grounds for actors and communities to work cooperatively. Where these collide, it is possible to identify areas of tension and spaces for alternative policies. Mapping how reconciliation is understood and implemented in Bosnia is both an exercise of analysis and understanding of the country, as well as a critical engagement with how peace policies unfold in a post-war society. Impact is twofold. For me, it is a way of seeing how people move forward after war, learning a lesson on how to deal with my own personal wars. It also brings light to obstacles and opportunities within post-war reconstruction work, speaking directly to peace policymakers.